Bath Ironworks out with a statement tonight after striking workers rally. Good evening. I'm Terry Stackhouse and thanks so much for tuning in. We're going to begin tonight in Bath. Some strong words today from union officials. The international president of the machinists union addressing workers there today, accusing BIW of corporate greed, saying they will not back down from this fight. The strike there started about a month ago and the big sticking points remain use of contractors, work rules and seniority. Union leaders Robert Martinez Jr. and Brian Bryant calling out the president of BIW today, saying that he needs to do the right thing. Sarah Gideon also addressing union workers today, saying that she will continue to fight for them. Senator Susan Collins also visiting those workers yesterday. Collins has said that she hopes that both sides can reach an agreement through mediation. Local Essex leaders meeting with a federal mediator earlier this week. And BIW out with a statement tonight saying that they are fully engaged in the mediation process and are prepared to return to the bargaining table when the mediation process calls for it. Taking a look now, first check at our forecast with meteorologist Jacqueline Thomas. And Jacqueline, if you like summer, if this is your time of year, then tomorrow's looking pretty good. You happening now, demonstrators camping outside of Portland City Hall for the fourth night in a row, demanding that the city take action to address homelessness. This as city leaders are sharing an overview of the affordable housing projects they say they have in the works. According to Mayor Kate Snyder, there are currently 10 projects in the pipeline, totaling almost 900 units of housing. These projects are a mix of new construction, renovations, and city-owned property. We're told that these projects have been recently approved by the City Council, or they will be by August. The city is sharing these plans in light of the recent protests. Here's what those protesters are calling for specifically. Decriminalize camping in public spaces. Defund the police and shift that money for essential services. Establish overdose prevention sites. A plan for permanent affordable housing and an extended freeze on evictions. A workshop on housing in Portland is scheduled for Monday night. Another Mater has died with COVID-19, bringing the state's death toll to 119. State health officials say that the man who died was in his 70s from Somerset County. 33 new cases of the virus reported today for a total of 3,790. Active cases now sit at 390. 22 more Maters have recovered, bringing that total up to 3,281. New guidelines issued by the CDC this week on child care and education strongly encouraging schools to reopen. The agency cited evidence that suggests the virus isn't as serious for children and that kids aren't as likely to spread it to adults. The CDC also stressed the harm done by keeping kids out of schools, including learning loss and less access to food, mental health care and other services. The guidelines do recommend keeping schools closed in cases of substantial uncontrolled coronavirus outbreaks. Federal aid to unemployed people during this pandemic ends this weekend. The weekly $600 boost stops this month unless Congress passes a new stimulus bill next week. Ixa Diaz is in Washington with the latest. The FDA has authorized a COVID-19 test that can be used on anyone, even those without symptoms. The agency reissued an emergency use authorization for a lab court test after it proved that it could detect the virus in asymptomatic people. Not only that, but the company can test pooled samples of up to five swabs at a time, which helps save resources. Tests show that milk from a farm in central Maine has a high level of the chemical PFAS. PFAS is found in all kinds of household cleaning products, but long-term exposure has been linked to certain cancers. The State Department of Ag says that the state's milk supply is still safe to drink, adding that the farm is no longer producing milk for consumption. The name of the farm not released. State officials are now looking into how that chemical got there. Four people facing charges after a drug bust at Augusta. Police say that yesterday they found more than 2,000 grams of crack cocaine and several guns while executing a search warrant at an apartment. Money also found, believed to be from selling drugs. 50-year-old Laurie Meter of Augusta, 21-year-old Preston Mack of New York, 18-year-old Shakami Shannon of New York, and an unnamed minor, all facing charges for alleged drug trafficking. A North Berwick building destroyed by fire Saturday morning. The state fire marshal says that a heat gun power tool started it. Nobody was hurt. Nobody was in the building at the time as it was being remodeled. Several other departments from both Maine and New Hampshire had to be called to the scene. Crews were there for more than six hours. A home in Portland badly damaged by fire as well. This one happened Friday morning. Crews called the Mass Ave in the Rosemont neighborhood. Nobody home at the time. It took crews about an hour to get those flames under control. 
The number of wildfires in Maine so far this year is up dramatically. The Maine Forest Service reports a 170% increase in wildfires so far in 2020 compared to last year, which is the highest number in a decade. The agency says that they have responded to almost 800 wildfires spanning 900 acres. Forest rangers are asking Mainers to be extra vigilant and avoid any activity that could spark wildfires. Coming up, truly great way to enjoy the summer. A big surprise in store for one person who just wanted to enjoy their pool. Jacqueline, thank you. Several days of celebrations honoring the life of Congressman John Lewis beginning today in Alabama. The 80-year-old civil rights icon died on July 17th at the age of 80. Here's ABC's Rachel Scott with the details. Fans of Regis Philbin are remembering the longtime TV host and personality tonight. His family says that he died yesterday of natural causes. He was 88, just one month shy of his 89th birthday. Philbin, best known for co-hosting TV's long-running Live with Regis and Kathy Lee, and then later Live with Regis and Kelly. He also hosted Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. He was nominated for 37 Daytime Emmy Awards throughout his career and won six. He broke his own Guinness World Record for the most on-camera hours on United States TV. We are just 100 days away from Election Day and President Trump letting loose with a volley of attacks against Joe Biden. But did he falsely blame Biden for supporting certain causes? Chief National Investigative Correspondent Mark Albert has our weekly fact check from Washington. Red Sox back to baseball. Game two of the 2020 season today, hosting the Orioles at Fenway Park, at empty Fenway Park. 14 hits, 13 runs last night in the opener. A different story today, though. Martin Perez on the mound for Boston. Sox playing a tough game here. Mitch Moreland homered, but Sox couldn't bring home the W today. The Orioles take this one 7-2. Series finale is Sunday. First pitch scheduled for 135. And if you watched any of baseball's opening day games and the lack of fans made you feel like you got to change the channel, you're actually in the minority. An ESPN survey found that 78% of people polled were in favor of sports returning, even if it meant restrictions on fans. 64% of fans said that the lockdown gave them a better appreciation for watching sports. Period. Now I'll second that one. The NFL and the Players Union agreed to terms on a deal that will allow the 2020 football season to begin as scheduled, but without preseason games. The teams generally have played four exhibition games to get ready for the upcoming season. The camp timeline is also going to be looking different. Beginning next week, teams will start COVID-19 testing and virtual meetings, followed by strength and conditioning. Actual practices will not even start until the 16th day of camp, a different season. The Bruins headed to Toronto where they're going to resume the 2020 season. The Bees holding their final workout at their practice facility near Boston today. They're leaving for Canada tomorrow. All 50 people in Boston's travel party will have one final round of COVID testing before they take off. Head coach Bruce Cassidy says that they will need to cut two forwards, but will bring all 10 defensemen from camp and all four goaltenders. Still ahead, many hands make light work how volunteers came out to help the South Portland food cover. Jacqueline, thank you. A sweet story back here at home. The South Portland Food Cupboard, they asked for help and they got it. Their facility has a pair of large rooms that primarily they use for storage. And today they were asking for help clearing out one of those rooms so that it could be cleaned and painted. And they were taking any volunteers that could come and help, asking everybody to do their best to socially distance at the time as well.